Yo, how's it going guys? It's the Casual Cube, coming at you from my dining room table. Uh, I'm gonna do a quick rundown on my very first popper paper event. Um, actually, just my first ever popper, because I, I, you know, I'm not on MTG Go. Um, I'm not even on MTG Arena yet, so I'm strictly a paper player, but, you know, someone mentioned it was coming up on Saturday. And, yeah, I decided to throw myself in there, in there into the meat grinder, so... You know, after hearing all of the good stuff from, um, you know, the professor from, you know, Tularian Community College, as well as uh, another YouTuber that I really enjoy watching is Any New Province. Um, you know, after, you know, taking a look at Popper, um, you know, I just decided why not. It's a really affordable format. Um, you know, it's mainly all common cards, uh, even though it includes cards that might have been reprinted uh, as an uncommon, so as long as it's been printed as a common at some point, it's legal, uh, but there's also a ban list too, and there's also some cards that are like, yeah, anyways, there's some cards that are kind of funky that, you know, they're like a promo or whatever, and they're not legal, uh, so it's kind of a weird uh, list of cards that you can use, but it's, uh, you know, all the cards in Magic, and it's kind of one of those formats that's, uh, I guess, considered legacy, I think, um, or I don't know what you would call it. Uh, I think Legacy and Vintage are their own thing, but it's one of those older formats where all, you know the history of Magic. You can play with a bunch of the cards, and again, being affordable, that's right up my alley. I like building these decks on a budget, and just so I can have them on the kitchen table as well, just to have fun. Uh, so you know, I wanted to make a home brew, a mono black home brew using Ill Gotten Inheritance. Now this card is. You know, this card's hit or miss. Um, some people like it, some people really hate it, because it's a 4-mana, slow, and clunky enchantment. It doesn't affect the board state. Uh, you don't even get benefit, that much benefit, on your next upkeep, because it's just 1 damage, and, you know, you gain 1 life, so it's not that much. It's really incremental. Uh, but at the same time, it's inevitability. It's um, very flavorful, being in black and having that life drain built into a permanent... Uh, and then it also has a finisher where you can pay six, sacrifice it, and deal four damage. Uh, so I, I don't know. I just I wanted to build around this card, but at the same time, you know, um, if we look at like where Mono Black is in Popper, just like at least from the net decks that I was doing. Um, also, I didn't go into the event blind. I was, you know, I have had experience watching any new province as well as, um, you know, just looking at the net decks from NTG Goldfish just to see what you know I'm going to be going against, but. Anyways, um, you know, looking at Mono Black Aggro, for instance, Mono Black Aggro. Um, any new province just did a video on, uh, you know, I think an all-in Mono Black Aggro, where it's really low to the ground. It's like, you know, really low land count, like 15, 16 swamps, and it uses a card called Dark Ritual, where you pay one black and you get three black in return. So you can just empty out your hand, and like it says, it's a you know an all-in aggro strategy. Uh, and a card like this with 4 mana is just way too slow, way too clunky. You're not going to get to 4 mana consistently. Um, whereas if we look on the other end of the spectrum with Mono Black Control, well, first of all, with Mono Black Control, I'm already playing a Mono Black Control list in Standard, which is very similar, has some creatures and a bunch of removal. Um, but at the same time, if we look at those lists, at least from the, uh, you know, on MTG Goldfish, Mono Black Control, I think there's some people that have gotten 5-0 with it. Um, but, you know, they, they're not going to jam this card in there because those car, uh, those decks are well-oiled machines. Uh, you got to ask yourself, what are you going to replace with Ill-Gotten Inheritance? And, you know, those cards, I mean, those decks uh, are, you know, already well-established. They're probably not even, not even looking at this card. Um, because, you know, like I said, they're, you know, well-refined, the pilots and players, they, they, they already know what they want and they're not going to jam this card in because, you know, it's going to take a slot from another card that's probably necessary in Mono Black Control, at least for the popper metagame. Um, and, you know, me coming in blind into my very first popper uh, event, I just wanted to build around this card and just have fun. So um, I kind of went with both strategies. I did a very, very low... Uh, you know, removal count, uh, so I'm not even even close to control, but, you know, I wanted to go with a creature-based strategy with this card, the reason being is because I wanted to establish the board state, kind of do what aggro does, where I have, a, you know, a decent amount of one drops, some two drops, and as you'll see here in my deck list, some, even some three drops, so it's like a model black mid-range, um, and I have a well-established board with a bunch of creatures, hopefully I'm swinging it for damage, uh, and, you know, I could play this as my top end, on, or some of my top end, and have this as inevitability, uh, for the deck, and that's kind of what my strategy was, it was kind of taking the best aspects of 
aggro, having some mid-range creatures, and having a little bit of removal. So I would consider it like a model black mid-range drain deck, but uh, you'll see here in just a second what, what my deck list is. But these are the cards that um, you know I ordered, but um, they, they actually were um, coming in the, in the mail on the same day. My The event was at 1 p.m., but my mail doesn't come in until like 2 or 3 p.m., which is really unfortunate because I was always checking. It was you know first class uh, tracking, and I was I was looking at the mail, uh, the tracking all the time, and I was like, oh no, you know it's coming in on like it said like Saturday evening at like eight p.m. or whatever. But you know I know my mail comes in at like two or three, so it really sucked because I had to go to my game store at like uh, you know forty five minutes early because I knew the mail wasn't gonna come in on time. And um, you know these were the cards that. Uh, they had zero in stock because if you look at them, they're just old, uh, you know, old school cards. Uh, you know, I love this kind of art, by the way. I wish, uh, you know, they would take away, uh, well, not take away completely, but just kind of reduce the current day modern, you know, digital art and go for this, like, you know, very visceral, like, comic uh, style art that, you know, has been gone for quite some time. I wish they could bring back some of this stuff. As a matter of fact, you know, a little side tangent over here. Um, there's some posts on Reddit that I'll see every now and then where it's like an old school style of a card, but it's, a, it's like a more modern card that wasn't printed in that kind of style. And it's just like, it, well, I forgot what it was. There was like two of them that I really liked. Um, but anyways, just a little side digression over there. Uh, but yeah, I just wish they would bring back some of this kind of art style. But, you know, these were the cards that I really needed that uh, the game store didn't have. Um, Carnophage along with Vampire... Uh, Eviscerator is a one mana two two, and like I said, I want to establish the board early in the game, get those two twos going, along with Dalthy Slayer, which has uh, built in evasion with shadow. Not a lot of creatures have shadows, so uh, I really just want to start pinging in for that damage. Uh, you know, get them all. You know, be an aggressive deck early in the game. Have a bunch of creatures, and even like Kumbaj Witches, which is a two mana one three. It's not aggressive. You know, doesn't have aggressive stats as far as power. Uh, but at the same time, it has a nice tap ability where we can deal one damage to any target, even though our opponent gets the same ability, uh, where they can choose um, one damage to any target as well. We don't have too many uh, one-toughness creatures, so uh, they're not going to get the payoff that we get, where we have the option to either affect the board state by pinging one damage to a one-toughness creature that our opponent may have, or just straight up going at their face. So, um, you know, that's kind of... The, these are the cards that I really wanted that I didn't have that, you know, came in later in the day, but, uh, you know, I'll show you what I ended up, uh, yeah, buying in store. So I had to repurchase the Vampire Lacerators, the Dusk Hunter Bats, as well as the Elgon Inheritances, and the Grey Merchant of Asphodel. Because um, I'm trying to go with that more mid-range style um, with, uh, you know, Mono Black. I thought that Devotion could really be cool as another drain mechanic. So, um, the Scattering Heartstoppers, they weren't in my initial, uh, you know, deck list. I had to, you know, like I said, come in early and kind of like revamp my deck. Uh, and, you know, they didn't have some of the cards. So I had to like go on Scryfall and be like, oh, well, what can I use for a substitute? And uh, I also came up with, uh, you know, I saw, you know, with Mono Black Aggro, I was taking some of their cards and I was like, oh, well, Thornbow Thorn Archer is kind of like um, Vicious Conquistador in Standard. Where, you know, every time you attack, it deals one damage. In this case with Thornbolt Archer, it's if your opponent doesn't have any elves. And there was one elf deck. I didn't actually face him, but there was one elf deck in the meta at, at my local game store. So, uh, but it, for the most part, it's going to deal, every time it attacks, has that one power, two toughness body. So every time it attacks, it pings your opponent for one damage. So, again, um, I was trying to also stay away from two, uh, one toughness creatures. Um, like with Skittering Heartstopper, I was looking at the Death Touch creatures, but they all had one toughness, and the reason why I didn't want to have one toughness creatures is because, um, that's very prone to, you know, seeing a bunch of, uh, electricaries and sideboards from MTG Goldfish, and I just thought, you know, I don't want to get, like, board wiped or whatever, like, two for one, so I wanted to st steer away from those one toughness creatures, so I went Skittering Heartstopper, um, as, like, just, you know, to get in that kind of, like, spectacle damage where, I could, you know, it, with Skittering Heartstopper, you can pay one black and give it Death Touch. I just always wanted my opponent to always be on their heels and think, oh, well, you know, he can give he can give it Death Touch, so I'm just going to let the damage in, you know? So, yeah, as, as well as having that two toughness body. Plus, all these cards were super cheap. Um, uh, you know, going on to, into Font of Return, um, you know, being a creature-based deck with, like, 25-plus creatures, I just thought, you know, Font of Return would be good. It's a two-man enchantment. Uh, you have to pay four mana and sacrifice it to get three creatures from your graveyard into your hand. And it actually panned out really well in one of my matchups. I'll show you here uh, my matchups later on in, in this video. But um, I think I got, like, what was it? I had, like, two.
two Skymarch Bloodletters and a Thornbow Archer that I got back. And it just and, and it added inevitability to the game, uh, where along with my ale gun inheritance, um, you know, that's how I won the game. Uh, so yeah, I ended up spending an, an additional four dollars and thirty cents at the game store along with uh, the five dollar entry. So again, you know, really affordable format. Um, you know, playing with all the cards in Magic at common rarity, just really cool. So this is my deck list at you know going into the format. Um, you know, again, I don't have the Chronophages, so. You know, I you know I just ended up using the heart stoppers. Uh, I had one blight keeper that um you know had in my you know bulk, so I just thought you know why not you know so one one is a spicy you know just one of singleton uh you know I I was thinking well if popper could go you know it's a little bit slower it could go for the distance blight keeper eight mana sacrifice it and has you know target opponent loses four life kind of has that uh, ill gotten inheritance effect where you can finish off the game. Just thought, you know, why not as a one of? And even early in the game, it's just a 1 1 flyer. So, has that evasion. Uh, but otherwise, you know, Vampire Lacerator, Thornbow Archer, uh, essentially, you know, gonna deal two damage when they swing in. Uh, Skittering Heartstopper over here, I just thought, uh, you know, they're gonna let the damage through because I can always pump it or I always have that threat of pumping it with Death Touch, so they're not gonna block it. Uh, and also, um, you know, in case I go into Gurmag Anglers, you know, I can also have that ability to, you know, trade into them. So, um, I had dead weights as my removal. Just you know, again, a bunch of cards that I had for my bulk. Uh, Dust Hunter Bat. I didn't have the again. I didn't have the Douthy Slayer. So uh, the Dust Hunter Bats kind of actually did really well. I could also trade into um, Delvers, a uh, Delver of Secrets, when they flip into three two flyers. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm almost always going to ping in that damage to you know give it a one one counter. Um, the Vicious Offering again, another card that I had in my bulk. Uh, just, you know, I could also trade up one of my creatures, my one drops, into a Gurmag Angler, 5-5. Five, five. So I thought, you know, why not just include it as a singleton. Um, but I thought, you know, maybe dead weights would be better because they're one mana as removal. So, uh, again, the final return, it's a creature-based deck. So if I we grind it out, you know, I get that recursion. Um, Skymarch Bloodletter over here, uh, as well as Blade Jugglers, were kind of like the mid-range three drops. Um, in the case of Bl Blade Juggler, the reason why I really like it, it's very similar to that Frixian Rager, where it's, well, Frixian Rager is a 2-2 though, and it doesn't require Spectacle, but uh, Blade Juggler, I really like it because it has a 3 power, so we're really trying to swing in, uh, trying to be aggressive, uh, Skymarch Blood Letter, on the other hand, has that built-in evasion with the 2-2 flying body, as well as having that ping effect, so I just thought, you know, again, I'm trying to build around Ilgon Inheritance, have a bunch of ping, drain effects, and of course this all-star uh, enchantment itself, Ilgon Inheritance, that's kind of the build-around card, so you got to include all four of. And on our top end over here, we're looking at Grey Merchant of Asphodel and Grimag Angler. Grimag Angler just as a one-of, it's a 5-5 body, but also it requires a graveyard to be stocked, so I didn't want to go, you know, like two to four copies because I don't think, I'm, I'm not really like the, what is it, the blue-black Delver deck where, you know, it's constantly pitching stuff into the graveyard, uh, you know, where we could, you know, always have stuff to exile with Delve, uh, with Grimag Angler, but, you know, I just want to include it as a one-of because, you know, potential to be like a three-mana, four-mana, five-five, I just thought was really nice, so... Also, I got one from, um, you know, Ultimate Masters from the draft chaff. You know, there's a pile of cards that some person didn't want, and I saw Grimag Angler, and I was like, heck yeah, man, I'm going to take this. Uh, but anyways, uh, the Great Merchant of Asphodel, again, another one of those drain effects. Um, in this case, it automatically is going to do uh, two damage uh, because it has two black in its own uh, mana cost. So just, like, with our board state, we can establish, like, one drops, two drops, and three drops. This could potentially do like four, five, maybe even six plus damage, and we gain life. So, again, we're trying to add inevitability to the deck. So, but also it's five mana, and also only has like a two four body. Um, so I just thought, you know, as a two of, I didn't want to go all the way up to four of, even though I did include two in the sideboard, just because you know I thought maybe, you know, if there was a a, a deck that was really grinding it out, maybe this card could be, uh, you know, just throw in additional two copies from the sideboard into the main. And just 22 Swamps, um, yeah, very simple mana base. So the sideboard here, again, the, the two Grey Merchants of Asphodels, um, but otherwise, you know, four Duress, four Foot Life Fiends. Um, Foot Life Fiends I thought would be good against, like, Elves or something, uh, where I can, you know, try and get two for ones if they swing in. I can, you know, trade one uh, Foot Life Fiend into another, uh, you know, ping another one of their targets. As well as, um, you know, maybe like a mono red deck, or, uh, you know, if they're going like a bunch of goblins, for instance, I could you know, block and then ping off um, one toughness creatures. 
I don't know, that's just kind of my, my mentality. It probably is, is, isn't even a good card uh, from the sideboard, but, um, you know, three Mephitic Vapors, uh, again, against the Elf deck with a bunch of one-toughness creatures or any kind of one-toughness creature spam deck. Um, just thought it'd be a good board wiper, uh, and I don't have Pestilences. The Cartouche of Ambition, and another one of my cards from the Draft Shaft, Bulk Piles, um... I think I got it from the, what was it, uh, the Challenger deck I had these from the sideboard, so I just thought, yeah, why not, uh, you know, ping off one of their one toughness creatures as well as get one of my creatures get lifelink to, you know, again, sustain ourselves. Severed Legion, um, I think this one was from the Star City Games, yeah, Star City Games, like, bulk lot, and I was just like, hey, why not, you know, just throw it in here <laughs> from the sideboard if I'm going against the deck that doesn't have any artifact creatures or black creatures, a 2-2 with uh, evasion that's unblockable, so I don't know, uh, but... I don't think I, I, maybe I sideboarded it in like once or twice, but otherwise it just, it is a three mana and we were, we already have eight, three drops. So probably got to swap this out for something, but yeah, this is what our curve look like. Um, 28 creatures, 10 non creatures with the four dead weights, four ill gone inheritance, one font of uh, return and one, uh, vicious offering. But otherwise it was a creature based, um, you know, kind of a mid range deck. Uh, and yeah, going into our round one. This deck was crazy. It was it was called Acid Trip. It's it's hilarious because you know the day before at F and M on Friday, uh, one of my friends Rick he was telling because I told him I was gonna do Popper and I was asking if he was gonna do Popper tomorrow, and he said hey look out for my friend or like my fraternity brother uh, Brian or something yeah I think his name is Brian, and um, yeah he he said that he likes to play this deck called Acid Trip and I was like what, and it was hilarious because I. I got him in the first round, which is hilarious. I just think, you know, yeah, what a coincidence, right? So, uh, but anyways, this deck was crazy. It was just, he was, the main card is Reality Acid. So, if you can bounce Reality Acid, well, Reality Acid's effect, when it leaves play, Enchanted Permanent Controller sacrifices it. So, it, the main goal is to bounce it all the time and kind of make it like a pseudo removal spell and that's what he did he was using like dream stalker for instance return a permanent you control back into your hand um he had like lone missionaries which gained him four health uh you know even like seagate oracle is a three mana one three body so it's blocking my like vampire lacerators for instance and you also get a card out of it and he, you know he had journey to nowhere He was using mole drifters um i was surprised to learn that he was only using one heliod's pilgrim though uh which could tutor out his enchantment uh reality acid so i think you can tutor out an aura with heliod's pilgrim um and yeah just really cool deck uh as you will see here ponder and preordain were in a lot of decks uh, that i faced uh, just because of the strength of the cards of themselves you can filter out your deck filter out your draws uh but yeah ponder and preordain were i think in all my rounds which is kind of interesting but yeah, I ended up losing to him. Um, just, yeah, crazy coincidence that I actually faced uh, Rick's friend or fraternity brother. And, yeah, he was he mentioned it on FNM and, yeah, got him in the first round. Hilarious. Uh, but, yeah, round two was um, Blue Red Delver. This one, I actually pulled out the win. Um, and, hold on, let's... Yeah, I lost game one, but game two, um, yeah, I cranked out the wins. Um, just having dead weights against, uh, you know, Delver of Secrets which is their primary win condition. It flips into a 3-2 flyer. Um, Lightning Bolts, Scred, uh, which deals damage based off of the amount of snow-covered permanents you have. And you know he had Counterspell, again, Ponder, Preordain, uh, Augur of Bolus, which was really good because, uh, yeah, you can get your uh, Sorcery or Instances. So just a really cool deck. It's a, it's a Delver deck, um, which I was already doing research on, uh, but it was blue-red, which, you know, has access to Lightning Bolt and Scred. Um, but yeah, I actually ended up going 2-1. and one. I think, what was it, uh, Game 3, he solved the inevitability of my uh, Ilgon Inheritance. I, you know, it triggered, and I could, you know, sacrifice it, so he just pretty much conceded. Uh, but yeah. Just really fun matchup um, with the Deadweights uh, against the Delver of Secrets. I think I, you know, Deadweight was an all star in that matchup. Uh, but yeah, moving on into round three was another uh, Delver deck. Um, my meta was actually pretty well di diverse. Uh, it's just I faced two Delver decks. I didn't actually end up facing a uh, Boros Koldotha deck, though, which was nice because I don't think I have any good answers to a 2 3 flyer. Um, 
yeah, that, that was one of my troubles in reality. I was, he was using the core sky fisher as well. And I just I didn't have an answer for a three toughness flyer. So um, yeah. Anyways, the mono blue delver actually used um, it was kind of cool because it used the ninja of the deep hours um, as well as the st spell stutter sprites. Um, I think that I actually saw spell stutter sprite in the blue red delver list. I think from the sideboard. Um, I don't completely remember, but. Yeah, this one was using the Vapor Snag, which you can. It was like a really good tempo play where he could, uh, you know, target one of my creatures and it comes back into my hand. I think he was using it against my uh, Dusk Hunter bats, for instance. Uh, you know, so it lost the counter, uh, and yeah, it just went back into my hand and it deals one damage to me. So it was kind of like trying to outrace you early in the game uh, with the Delver of Secrets, and he actually ended up using Mutagenic Growths. I think I had like. There was a game where I, I blocked, um, but he had two mutagenic growths, and he pumped up two of his creatures, so he just blew me out, killed two of my creatures. Um, and yeah, it was also using Gush, which you can return two islands, and you draw two cards. So, um, really cool deck. Uh, it's another one of those Delver decks, which I, you know, again, I was doing a little bit of research beforehand, so uh, that's why I went with the Deadweights, and yeah, it really panned out. Um, in this case, I think he just... Uh, with the mono blue delver, um, just got the better draws. Uh, game one, he got he was on the play. Game two, I was on the play. And the game three, he went back on the play. And just being on the play, um, you know, with an aggressive deck with delver, he just got it. And yeah, that's just the way games work out sometimes. Uh, but yeah, round four, I got a buy. And yeah, I was actually kind of disappointed because I wanted to actually play and. Yeah, really just get some experience, so it really sucked. But uh, my meta was, this was a good time where I actually walked around and, and wrote down my meta. And my meta was, it, at the start of it, we had um, six tables. Uh, so we had 12 entries that were completely full, uh, that filled up the, the, six round, uh, the, the six tables. So this was my meta that I, you know, like round four during the buy, I just walked around and kind of kept track of all the games. So here were my matchups, were asked to trip. Uh, blue red delver mono blue delver and then me myself mono black homebrew and but i saw a, a red green elves and it was using the bernie tree emissary where it gave you a bunch of mana um so it was a combo deck uh and then there's a boros kodotha out in the field i actually think there was two boros uh kodotha decks which uses like the artifact synergy of where you play an artifact where uh you know when it enters the battlefield you draw a card and then it uses the core sky fisher to bounce it to bounce your uh, permanent, so you can reuse it again to draw more cards. Um, there's two mono red decks, um, which I assume were the same, but I you know didn't want to write they were both burn or whatever. Uh, but I'm pretty sure they're both burn decks because I uh, I think they were both using skewer the critics. Um, there's one Tron deck, uh, and then there's three decks that um, I guess they dropped. Uh, so you know I just couldn't f you know find out what decks they were using. So uh, really diverse meta. Um, you know, not really like a bunch of the same deck. Uh, yeah, just really cool that um, I was able to play Popper in paper, and it being my first event, being the only mono black. Uh, you know, I felt like a little bit of a special snowflake. As a matter of fact, someone mentioned that it was a homebrew deck. That's why, you know, initially I wrote it down as like a mid range drain deck, but I just you know it's still trying to find its identity. I think so. I'm just gonna label it as a homebrew. So, um, yeah, that was my experience. It was a lot of fun. Um, I'm thinking of actually making a mono, well, not a mono, uh, a Rakdos uh, uh, build, like a Rakdos control. I know that there was, um, uh, I think, like a red-black discard uh, deck. So, uh, you know, I was taking some of their removal with Lightning Bolt and Fire Bolt, as well as Terminate. And, you know, I'm going to take that and try and jam um, Ilgon Inheritance as my win condition and have a more, even more removal with, like, uh, the mono black control decks using Echoing Decay as well as Chainer's Edict. Uh, and yeah, um, someone mentioned, um, I think it was Brian, the Reality Acid player. I think he said, you should try Curse of the Pierced Heart uh, with Ilgon Inheritance. And I was like, what is that? And yeah, it's a it's a en curse enchantment that you target a player, target your opponent, and it deals one damage um, at the beginning of their upkeep. So along with Ilgon Inheritance could be, you know, you know playing... Um, uh, both four copies each could just have that drain effect. Rakdos drain maybe would be a cool archetype, uh, as well as like Evinsar's Justice. It's kind of like Pestilence, but Pestilence requires that you have a creature, I think, in play. Because if you have no creatures in play, it sacrifices itself. I think it's one of its conditions. But with Evinsar's Justice as well as Chainer's Edict, 
even Firebolts, we're getting so much value with the buyback and flashback. Um, so, yeah, I think it's just um, kind of a unique way to play the, the you know, kind of like a control drain, uh, you know, red-black. Um, I was also looking at Doomblade, which someone mentioned that I probably should include against, um, you know, the Delver decks. Just, it destroys target non-black creature. So, yeah, just have, like, this really cool, like, Rakdos control would be kind of fun and popper, I think. So, I think I might build this or utilize these cards and, and uh, kind of build around Ilgon Inheritance in another fashion. Maybe a lot less creatures and more of, like, control builds uh, with potentially no creatures. Um, so... Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's kind of unfor unfortunate because I was asking around, uh, every time I was playing, I was asking, hey, do you know any other game stores that are doing Popper? And it seems like there's not too many, uh, at least in my area, um, from what people were mentioning. There was one in downtown Atlanta, uh, where it was, uh, they were also doing a Popper event on the same day. But, again, you know, I was trying to find, uh, more game stores that potentially could, you know, maybe on a Sunday or something where, you know, I could, uh try and like schedule and try and you know play more popper because I, I really enjoy the format already you know my first event so um yeah I had a good time even though I went one and two and I got a last round by which is unfortunate you know I wanted to play again but I think you could only um the top four got prize payouts uh the first place got an Ubel yet which I thought was really cool uh but you know second place got some store credit and third and fourth also got uh I think their entry back in store credit so uh, but everyone else, you know, down five bucks, but that's okay. Like, it was, it was still a ton of fun. Uh, but I think in order to get top four, you need to go three and one, maybe? Um, yeah, I think if you got two losses, uh, you know, when I beat the red-blue Delver player, um, he just dropped after that, so I think once you know you got two losses, um, you, uh, yeah, you can just drop because you know you're not going to place, but I still wanted to get that experience in on my last game, so... Oh, well, uh, but it was a ton of fun, and I'm going to keep on doing Popper and pa Paper. So, yeah, I'm sold on the format. It's kind of, it kind of flows with my ethos on, like, uh, what I want Magic to be for me. Uh, like, being, you know, making a bunch of, uh, you know, budget paper decks and having them for the kitchen table. So, yeah, to kind of build more into my collection, in this case, with Popper decks. So, um, yeah, my next build is going to be this red-black uh, Popper control, drain, deal a bunch of damage, uh, deck, so, yeah, that's for the future, though, uh, but that's the end of this video, hope you guys take it easy.